Okay, so we have a small microscope, uh, you know, just an electronic screen microscope on the main bench, but we're definitely going to need one, uh, you know, another type for this new work that uh, hopefully we'll be doing. So we've gone for a uh, proper uh, microscope with a, a camera uh, attachment and a screen, so we're just going to have a quick look at that. <laughs> so it looks like this is the high definition camera. HDMI, USB, IR, video, pictures, playback. Trinocular microscope HD camera. Doesn't say which model. Oh, it's the M13 or whatever that is. Okay, so a small power supply, a remote control, HDMI cable. USB cable, some instructions, and the actual camera itself. Okay, it's uh, better than I uh, expected it to be. Um, a TF card on there as uh, well. Nice alloy body. 38 megapixel, so it's 1080, 30 frames a second, uh, 2K video. Okay, so the app, you can take 38 megapixel uh, pictures, the USB out is 1080p, video recording looks like it is 2K, uh, 1080p, so yeah, that looks absolutely fine. Assuming there's a lens somewhere in the packet for it. Surprised it's not in there actually. Of course there is no lens, it's going through the microscope, oh dear. <sighs> right, I'm assuming this will be the screen. VGA in, HDMI in, uh, component in, not sure what we've got there, audio perhaps, BNC connector and a USB connector. So uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be fine. It obviously mounts onto a um, column that's part of the microscope frame. 
heavy. Yeah, 0 0.5, we obviously do a range, tube, 0 0.7. Oops. We have a metal arm. With Alan Key. in the finest quality and I'm certainly not seeing the finest quality but that's not going to matter it's a bit uh, it's a bit rough around the edges I'm having trouble hearing can you say that again oh no I can't this whole thing is taped up so I'm going to have to turn this upside down I think taped up there so let's guarantee it's upside down can't we Okay, so a massive uh, arm, nice smooth looking lever, that seems very well made. Hmm. Okay, let's get these bits out. And we have, it uh, looks like a cover for it, well it's a nice touch I suppose. So we have the two of these 10 by 20 optics, some knobs and a lever. 
Yeah, you know that place is really heavy. Yeah, there's definitely no way this is no way this is going anywhere once it's uh, Jesus, once it's on the bench. Yeah. It's incredibly heavy. Have to weigh that at some point. So we have it's massive sliding boom here. That feels quite smooth. That can be locked in place as well. Okay, we have a couple of eye cups, these rubber eye cups, a, uh, another lens, 0 0.5. I thought that was already in there, but I just guess that's for something else. We have a, another. Arm and knob. Yeah, looks like that screws into there. A little grub screw in there to lock it all into position. Focuser here. That seems very smooth. I don't know which way around that goes, but uh, you get the idea. Let's just pop that down so you can see it. So, yeah, that'll be set up on there. And then the main head. So we've got a mixture here, a bit of alloy uh, and some plastic parts, I think. Yeah, there we go. So that just sits into uh, to this piece here. So I think the idea now is to get this assembled and, uh, and then have a closer look at everything. I don't know how I can film looking through it, but uh, we can take some photos, you know, with the screen and everything. So yeah, anyway, look, just an unboxing of that. Links will be in the description as, uh, as always. Okay, so after some faffing around and uh, there's actually a fairly serious lack of instructions because this has the monitor and this uh, sliding boom. Um, these instructions uh, do not actually cover what I've got. Um, really only the basic uh, stand uh, so yeah I mean that's not exactly helpful to be honest uh, so after say some messing around this is how we've got it I'll have to look at the uh, picture on uh, on eBay uh, just to compare what I've got so, um, I would have thought the monitor should have been up the top somewhere, but the problem is if I put it, if I lower this down um, and then put the monitor bracket up the top, you can't raise the microscope head high enough to focus. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a weird one because there's loads on that tube left, you know, to bring it down, but it, uh, it can't focus. <laughs> You know that far down, so I don't really, don't really get that. Um, so 
So at the moment we've got it focused on that circuit board and um, if you look at the screen that's pretty good. There's an optimal viewing angle from uh, the from the eyepieces you need to be a certain distance away uh, just to get it right. They do slide in and out uh, so you can adjust for your eyes. Um, although there's little screws, uh, where are we, little screws here. I've done the screws up and I um, can't see where the other one is. It's all bare there. But these uh, lenses still are loose like that, which I'm not really uh, massively keen on. <laughs> it doesn't uh, seem right. Um, I think you can focus each individual eyepiece like that. And that is actually taking them in and out. Um, you'll probably find the view through the eyepieces is not matching uh, the image on the screen. So you've got zoom, you've got zoom on the lens, and as you see, as you go through the range, the focal point changes, um, and then you focus with this one here. So if we now, I don't know which way we're going, maybe up, maybe down. Is that coming into focus again? Yeah, I think so. There you go. So let's say that's in focus, and that really is at the upper limit of the travel. Um, if you look through, oh yeah, yeah, that's nice and crisp in there. But if it isn't crisp on this one, what you've got here is a little adjuster ring. Um, and as I turn this, ring here you'll see this go through an optimum focus point so there perhaps so you can use both you can look through the eyepieces and just focus that and then if the camera isn't quite right you can just adjust it on that o-ring so focus adjust magnification up to uh, four and a half times but then you know, we've completely lost it there so we're going to need to bring that right the way down eventually that will come into focus let's get it through the lens first yeah so that's pretty good on the top corner pins And then we can just adjust here, just to bring that up to where it should be. Um, we've got this little LED add-on. We have brightness control and an on-off button. Yeah, you definitely need some light on it, especially through the lenses. Okay, uh, so I mean, you've got adjustment. Uh, you can swing this left and right. Uh, you can turn it here up and down, so you can swing the whole thing like that. Uh, actually, it's not pointing perfectly down now, is it? So I could loosen, uh, which one is it? This one here, and just level that off. The only thing I haven't been able to do work out is, uh, obviously this one is, uh, sorry, that's up and down there. Uh, we've got a lock on the slider here. So that is the one that moves the whole thing backwards and forwards. It's a bit rough, but it's not really a concern. Lock that up. What I haven't been able to do is work out how to tighten this one up. There is a, um, God, it's already tight. I don't understand why that is not locking anything up. 
doesn't look like it's the right thing that's going in there. If you look, there's a little brass metal insert and that is being pushed onto this. So I'm not really sure what's going on there because it's a bit of a pain when it keeps moving like that. Like I say, I will have to have a look on the YouTube uh, website just to see if we can work out what's going on. But uh, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty good. You can see even the height of that component, which isn't very much. It changes the the focus needs to be changed. So you either focus on the top, or you focus on the pin where it's soldered. But that's the case with any microscope system. The Mantis Elite HD had the same issue. So. That should definitely make things a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, let's first look at that. Uh, I'm going to go and check the images, see if I've assembled it roughly right. And then need to work out why that is um, able to spin like that, because I definitely need to change that. The other thing is, if you actually wanted to use this above a BGA station, you're going to have to put this on a much uh, thicker bed, you know, at least the thickness of the BGA station. Um, so it's going to need to go on another base, so it's up above that. If you wanted to be able to slide this across and inspect a, a BGA repair or, you know, IC change, whatever. Um, or I suppose you could alternatively source, well no that's threaded at the bottom, I was going to say source another uh, tube but you can't do that either because this is custom made, that, that screws into that base there. Hmm, I guess a, uh, you know, a raised up box or something for it uh, to go on. Anyway, hope that was uh, useful. We've got various features I didn't mention on the camera. You can take uh, video and uh, you can actually also, let me just grab a shot here that's in the focus. You've got a remote control here and uh, you want to zoom in, just point it at the camera on the top and you can Actually, actually zoom in for a really close look. It starts to go grainy as you get right the way up. But it's not too bad, I don't think. There, you can just see that uh, that noise coming into the picture, and that's on full. Oops, full brightness. Uh, bugger. Let's get out of that menu and just zoom out. menu seems to cover all sorts of uh, white balance exposure, sharpness, colour contrast, cross line I guess we can have I don't know how you turn that on, let's have a look no, don't know, gonna have to read the instructions on turning that on oh ok, oh there you go, look you've got a scale line there on the uh, uh, on the screen I don't know how helpful that is. Anyway, so pretty comprehensive uh, card. Yeah, so you can pop an SD card into this and record videos, images, whatever you want, and play them back by the looks of it. So, um, yeah, not too bad at all. Just a couple of small issues to sort out. Um, instructions would have been 
that's so much uh, easier I'll have to see maybe there's a assembly guide on uh, YouTube or something I'll have to go back to the website and uh, have a look but first look that is uh, certainly going to do the job <laughs> so just had a look on eBay got this completely the wrong way around uh, this whole assembly is upside down if you spin that round you can see that that's going to raise this up considerably and uh, drop this right down and the monitor should be on the top here so I am going to have some lunch do some shopping uh, come back and actually assemble this correctly and uh, show you uh, later on the, uh, the correct orientation of everything Okay, so we're finally getting somewhere. Um, spun this round and got it all correctly assembled. There was still a bit of uh, sloppiness in the frame, and then I realised some of these Allen, Allen key screws were loose here. That stopped that. Um, what I can't do is tighten this up uh, on the pole, and uh, there's a hole drilled and threaded. And there is a, I imagine a uh, big end bearing. There is a brass piece that has been inserted in there. You can, I think you see the colour change there. There you go, you can see it. And uh, that screw should go in and press down. If you look under there, there. Well, what's happening is uh, these screw threads are fine. But what isn't okay is the um, thread in there. So um, the thread's not been tapped properly. So I can't thread this through and uh, tighten it up. So I might have to get the tap and die kit out and just run that through. Don't particularly want to force this because it will just probably rip out the other threads. But you can see they're not formed properly. If I, I don't know if I zoom in there or not, yeah, they're not really very well done, especially at the bottom there. So it won't punch through. So that's the reason I can't uh, get it uh, to grip on that pole. But other than that, it was uh, yeah, all back together <laughs> correctly. So one more go with this, and then we'll have to get the uh, the tap and die kit out. Okay, so my attempts at trying to force the uh, screw through and backing it off and forcing it through just didn't work. So I took out the uh, bearing, whatever you know, whatever you want to call it. And uh, when I've got the tap and die set and found that this M8 uh, went through absolutely perfectly, it did have to cut some material from the whole uh, thread so it just hadn't been made properly in the factory and if we look where are we if we look in there now come on focus come on you can do it yeah hopefully now you can see good threads and uh, whichever one of these two I uh, go to use that uh, will be fine. I'll probably use the lever, but you can see now that it goes all the way in, and we'll be able to stop that from rotating around the uh, the shaft there. So uh, yeah, I shouldn't have needed to do that, but uh, look, I've got the gear to do it. So fixed. So we'll now get this uh, assembled into the correct working position, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we are finally done. So now we've got everything done up, except that handle. Everything is now rock solid, um, apart from it moving slightly on the workbench, but that's uh, not a problem. So yeah, there's no more movement sideways and up and down and things like that. Uh, the only thing I'm not happy with is these eyepieces it's like that screw that's going in there is uh, not long enough now, and appreciate you want these to be able to turn slightly but i don't really want it flapping around like that um, so yeah that's what we're looking at 
seems best to try and get it uh, manually in focus by adjusting the height here just by looking, looking at the screen. I've now moved that, there we go. Uh, so leave that in the uh, mid position so you've got movement up and down. Adjust manually for focus on this bit here. And for God's sake, never forget to put that back in there because if you let that go by accident, uh, sorry, unscrew that and let, you know this slips out of your hand, that is going to stop it smashing down onto the workbench and causing all sorts of uh, damage potentially. So yeah, make sure, sure that is done. In fact, what I'm going to do is get an O-ring and uh, just put an O-ring resting around that so if this does come down it's got a softer uh, stop to hit rather than uh, this anodized black paint hitting the um, the aluminium or steel whatever that's uh, made of. Uh, so yeah, mid-range, get it focused on this first and then head over to here. The uh, sides turn in and out obviously to suit your eyes. Um, once you've got that positioned correctly, I'm just going to check because I've moved it. Yeah, you should see a circular circular image. Um, that's what you're looking at. I wear glasses and I can actually rest my glasses on here and uh, see perfectly. Then shut your right eye and achieve the best focus you can by bringing this in and out and then repeat for the other eye and uh, just get the best focus for uh, each eye that you can achieve. It's quite clear where it's focused and then when you look through both again you should be uh, seeing a really good clear image. Uh, so zoom uh, on this one, it will go out of focus throughout the optical zoom range, not a problem. Um, so yeah, you're going to adjust the big knob here for the viewfinder. Best vision there. And that's clearly gone out, so you can just tweak that back into focus. Um, so yeah, that is that. The light control is absolutely fine. This is an aftermarket cheapo LED ring light that came with it, but absolutely fine. On off switch, no problem. SD card needs to go in here if you want to record pictures etc. We do have a USB out so you could access this from your computer and transfer any of the relevant files. Uh, so yeah absolutely fine with that. So yeah, as you zoom in I think we're going to run out of, yes that is now that won't focus now because the whole lot is too close. So we would now have to remove this uh, away. Uh, it won't be focused on the board. So, no, you've got to just find these optimal positions and uh, move things around accordingly. So, uh, yeah, there we go. That should make things an awful lot easier when we've got to do work on these fine uh, components. I'll leave a link and uh, yeah, there we go. Hope that was useful. Okay, there was actually one more thing I wanted to show you. You, you can actually take this whole head off uh, like this, invert the, uh, the tube and put this back on. And the focal plane is, where are we? If I can do it on the screen, there. So you see the working height there. So that might be very useful if you're working with some sort of preheat a hot air station uh, that's underneath here. You should be able to get clearance uh, on that to uh, to allow inspection whilst it uh, is still in place. Of course, you can 
push the arm you know multiple ways uh, twist lean this back forward you could get in at an angle with the scope to see along the edge um, of a BGA or just looking at the edge of a row of pins uh, you've got multiple ways of adjusting this it will tilt the other way as well like that uh, so yeah absolutely fine um, yeah, yeah, just wanted to show that. Other than that, I think uh, we're done. Apart from if I could just do something with that, just to tighten it up, just a fraction. I want those to be a friction fit, but not flapping around like that so much. Other than that, great. Okay, <laughs> final uh, issue fixed. Just grab the O-ring box and where the gap between this part and the eyepiece is and where the screw is I've just rolled an o-ring up onto the top here put the lens back in pop the screw in and then just literally rolled that o-ring back down into the gap and uh, I can't do it with one hand but you can now move the eyepiece uh, and this independently with a nice friction fit and uh, there is no rattling around or any movement on those so now that feels much more professional uh, than a rattling around uh, lens was uh, showing or giving you so yeah much better i think we are now done with that um, so yeah there we go hope that helps somebody who may own one of these or may be thinking of one i can thoroughly recommend it incredibly well boxed uh, no damage yes we had a poorly made thread going through here but uh, quickly resolved with a tap and die set um, yeah if you haven't got one well that's a problem you might want to take that up with the seller but i shouldn't imagine that has happened too often um, is there a way around it? Yes, you could put a uh, small ball bearing or something into the hole uh, before you put the, uh, the bolt through there. So as the bolt hits its limit, the you know the ball bearing is actually making the required contact on the uh, pole. So didn't have to do it that way, but it was more professional. Uh, but there are other other ways of doing it. Okay.